Hello and welcome to this session on exercise and AXPAR. This is a brief overview of some of the considerations for exercise and how you can help use this to manage your condition. This is brought to you by the Coventry AXPAR team and it is based on information provided by NAS, the National Ankylosing Spondyloarthritis Society. If you would like further information, please contact their website. So what is exercise? We know that exercise is the most important thing that you can do to help yourself. Please try and think of it as activity and not exercise. Sometimes the word exercise can be off-putting and people automatically assume this means weights or going to the gym. This is absolutely not the case. Please think of your daily activity and how we can use this as a form of exercise. We know that the fitter and more flexible you are, the more able you will be to deal with your symptoms and flares. It is important that getting the right dose of exercise is as important as the right dose of medication and we know that equal management of both is the best way to help control your symptoms. Please try and remember that it is safe to exercise and with conditions such as AXPAR there are lots of different ways that you can access activity or exercise to help manage your condition. Some of the benefits we know from exercise that has been proved in scientific research are that it is linked to improved mood and self-esteem. It can contribute to increased range of movement of your joints. It can help with improved posture. It can contribute to improved sleep. It can help support a reduction in stiffness and associated pain. And more importantly, it can help with improved overall cardiovascular, respiratory, psychological and mental health. This is reflected in the UK Chief Medical Officer's Physical Activity Guidelines and it shows that there is moderate or strong evidence for the health benefit of exercise in adults. It can help reduce all causes of mortality, stroke and heart disease, improve hypertension, type 2 diabetes, it has improvements in eight listed cancers, reduction in depression, improved cognitive function, help with dementia management, quality of life, sleep, anxiety and weight status. All very important elements when dealing with chronic disease such as AXPAR. So how much exercise should we be doing? Now please think of activity not exercise and we know that some is good but more is better. Making a start today is it's never too late and consider that every minute counts. So this is based on the national guidance on exercise. The guidance will encourage you to build strength on at least two days a week. This may involve using resistance exercise, carrying heavy shopping bags, going to the gym. It can include things like yoga or body balance also. And this is to keep muscles, bones and joints strong. We encourage you to be active for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week. This can include a brisk walk, swimming or cycling, or a combination of at least 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity. And this is using the stairs, running or access to sport. We try and encourage you to minimise sedentary time. So break up periods of inactivity, such as laying watching television on the sofa, prolonged seated activity such as at a desk, and try and break that up with walking or change of position. For older adults, to reduce the chance of frailty and falls, it is important to inc incorporate some balance activity up to two days a week. This can be things such as Tai Chi, bowls, dancing. These are just some examples. There are many elements of activity that constitutes exercise that we can build into your daily routine. And this is where, as an AXBAR team, we are here to help you try and create an individualised plan that suits you. So what is the focus of exercise? We've mentioned the impact this has on the range of movement in your joints, your posture control, muscle strength and muscle length, your lung capacity, cardiovascular fitness, balance and bone health. But what does this mean to you? This may mean it's easier to climb the stairs or run around with your family, make it easier to lift items at home or at work, help you to support caring for children or pets, helps with improved breathing and less shortness of breath, it may make it easier to get up from the floor or get out of the car and help you to continue hobbies that you enjoy, such as walking the dog, climbing or sports.
So where to start? It can be overwhelming to exercise, especially if you have high levels of pain or fatigue. So try and start by looking at what you were doing already. Try and think about if there's any elements you can add to improve this. This might be things such as going to the supermarket, parking your car further away to increase your walking distance. It may be using the stairs more frequently. It may be increasing your activity with friends that may involve more active walking or exercise outdoors. Try and make a plan to keep activity regular and consistent. And more importantly, make a plan of what to do when things are more challenging. How are you going to continue to incorporate this activity when life gets very busy? And it is essential that you choose something you enjoy. We know that when you enjoy activity, you are much more likely to stick with it regularly and get more benefit from that. It may be that you enjoy the social interaction you get with others. It may be that you enjoy the break for some time away on your own, some time to think. It may be that you enjoy the sense of achievement and satisfaction you get from, from completing that activity. And everybody is very different. So a starting point with all our AXPAR patients is we try and encourage you all to have a home exercise programme that we can go through with you at your clinic appointments and with the physiotherapy team. This will include an element of flexibility or stretching exercise to try and maintain your range of movement. It may include some breathing exercise and some strength work. Again, this is something we will tailor to you and review this at your clinic appointments to make sure that it is suiting your current daily needs and plans for further changes. Here are some very gentle examples of some stretches, but this is something we can make as an individualised programme for you. I would also encourage you to use the NAS website for the active exercise videos that are freely available on that site. They also have the NAS YouTube channel with daily workouts, which are really useful and very helpful if you're struggling for ideas. Here are just two of the links that you can use to try and access the NAS YouTube account. Um, we know that these are all safe and they have been recommended for patients with AXPAR. So as mentioned, daytime activities do count. So think about some desk-based stretches, walking to and from the car, in the office or on the school run. Think about balance exercises. So when the kettle's boiling or brushing your teeth, can you add a stand on one leg or some balance work to help combine this with your activity? Walking the dog more frequently. This is really useful because the dog's is one way to encourage you to get out come rain or shine and this will inc incorporate regular activity. Housework is classed as an exercise in itself. It can involve stretches, a cardiovascular workout, but there may be some adaptions we need to put in place to make this more achievable to you, such as the way that you lift things or the way you're able to bend over, clean the bath, for example. And these are things we can go through with you. Supermarket shopping is something we all generally have to do. It may be that incorporating a walk around the supermarket using the trolley, walking to and from the car, the element of lifting or carrying bags, they're all important elements of exercise. This is something you would definitely miss out on by doing online shopping, but it may be that you're in a flare. This is something you adapt or incorporate when you're more able to do so. If you're on a phone call or a Teams meeting such as this one, can you get up and move around? Are there some exercises and stretches you can do when people can't necessarily see? And think about posture checks. On the NAS website, there is a 6 p.m. stretch, which we find really helpful. Encourage people that have been working particularly most of the day to incorporate that posture stretch to try and offload the stiffness that may have accumulated throughout the day. Exercise classes are an example that may you may find helpful. So if you were thinking about joining a gym or a class, this could be a brilliant way to manage your symptoms. Please ensure that you let your instructor or the gym know of your condition as your capacity for exercise and intensity and duration may change day to day. And this can be due to the slight unpredictability of the condition with flares. Please consider the following aspects of the gym class. Is it a high or low impact class? Does it have an element of body contact and are there different levels of classes on different days and which ones are going to work for you? Examples of gym based classes are things like body balance or Pilates, yoga, Tai Chi, body pump, circuit training course, stability sessions, high intensity interval training or HIIT sessions and spinning. Now there are online versions of all of these classes. Again, the NAS website has support for links for AXPAR specific classes. But it is very important that whichever route you choose to use, you enjoy it and that your instructor is aware of the condition in case any adaptions may be required. 
We know that cycling can be a good form of exercise if you have AXPAR and it can improve your general fitness and stamina. So regular cycling can be a really good way to try and help manage your condition and reduce the risk of other chronic illnesses such as heart disease, diabetes or cardiovascular disease and stroke. It can also help boost your mood and help keep your weight under control. But where do we get started? Start off slowly. This may be on a static bike or on a very flat ground, um, such as smooth pavements or roads, to try and avoid bumpy rough ground or anything that might really challenge your balance or impact on your spine. Try and use your bike for short journeys at first and then build up the distance you cycle over time. You may initially be sore after you first start riding a bike. This is normal with any form of new exercise, whether you have axe bar or not. And this is because you're using your muscles in a new way. This should settle down over time. And please incorporate a pacing program to build up your tolerance of this exercise gradually. Swimming or exercise in water is great for axe bar. This can help improve your general fitness, flexibility and strength in a safe and low packed environment. We're fully aware though that swimming is not for everybody and not everybody likes to get in the pool. However, if it's for you, please consider the type of swimming strokes you use. Front crawl is a great stroke for many people with axe bar because the body position remains extended throughout, including the neck and spine with gentle rotation through the trunk. Try and include some back crawl in every swimming session and this may help with opening the chest and it also ensures that the shoulders are rotating clockwise and anti-clockwise. Strokes that you may want to limit are things like butterfly because this can cause excessive arching of the black. Breaststroke can put excessive strain on the neck and lower back if you're having to keep your head out of the water. You can combat this by using a float or goggles to put your head more under the water. And um, Be mindful of your breaststroke leg kick if you have sore hips and a pelvis. This is something we can go through with you. Weekly swimming sessions are something it's good to build as a regular routine. You can do this whatever the weather. After a few sessions of going to swim in a couple of times a week, start from 30 minutes and try and build this up up to three times a week where possible however any exercise is good exercise and whether you go once a month or three times a week it's still a really important step in the right direction Something to consider with swimming is what to include in your swimming session. So start by swimming at a gentle pace for five minutes to warm up, do some gentle stretches in the water for a couple of minutes, and then have a 20 minute session of swimming at higher intensity. This may include a variation of different types of stroke and include a five minute cool down and stretch afterwards. Goal setting is really helpful with this to help monitor your improvements and achievements, but also have a plan as to how you're going to help progress your, your swimming plan. Once you feel strong enough and you're starting to gain benefit from your sessions, there's lots of opportunities to take your swimming further. That's with NAS and with your local um, access to gyms. Now, hydrotherapy is something you will hopefully have heard of within Coventry. We now have access to a Coventry hydrotherapy branch, which is access to exercise in water. Now, essentially, the warmth and the buoyancy of the water makes stretches more effective. It can be less painful. It makes it easier to stay upright because the effect of gravity is less. It can, to start with, require less physical effort. And you tend to find most patients report they also have a very good night's sleep afterwards. When you have exercises on land, you do have to work against gravity, whereas in water, this isn't the case. It doesn't pull you down like gravity does, but helps with the buoyancy to support you with your joints and patients find they can generally work harder in this environment, particularly if they struggle with joint pain or stiffness. It tends to be in waist deep water, so it is not essential that you need to be able to swim, particularly in deep water. It is important that you discuss your swimming ability with the instructor so they are aware of how to adapt things appropriately. And also water can act as a shock absorber, so it's a way to increase cardiovascular exercise without high levels of impact. A few key safety tips to consider are it is important to check with your doctor or physio before you try exercising in water. Be mindful that the area around the pool is slippery. Take care not to run or rush and wear flip flops or beach shoes um, around the pool just for some extra support. If you use a walking aid, please be mindful that the grip is appropriate and that it can slip when wet. It is possible to overdo things in water because things do feel a lot easier. So please start gently and build up slowly. 
Don't use a hydrotherapy pool, however, if you have unstable blood pressure, uncontrolled diabetes, angina at rest or shortness of breath at rest. If you have lung function problems, which due to the pressure of the water may cause increased pressure in deep water. Or if you suffer with asthma angina, take your halos or sprays with you and leave them at poolside so they're there if you need them. It is important that you go and undergo a health screening before being allowed to go in the hydrotherapy pool and this is usually completed by the physiotherapist running the session. Which leads me on very nicely to our new Coventry NAS branch for hydrotherapy. This is based at the West Coventry Academy. If you would be interested in attending our sessions with other patients with AXPAR, please email coventry at nas.co.uk for further information. Now, for some of you, access to exercise in a gym or water is not something you enjoy or you're keen to do, or due to work and life commitments, it's not always so practical. Fortunately, NAS have an online branch. This is an online session that you can use from home for anyone in the UK. It is based at online branch at nas.co.uk and they have online sessions on a Monday and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. and Thursday at 4.45 p.m. This includes Pilates, physio, relaxation and social sessions including stretching and yoga and it is something that is free. Please contact should you require further information. Now that's quite a lot of information so I've tried to put together a few top tips so please consider pacing, Activity is good. Exercise is something you can build up slowly. So consider pacing and planning of your activity. Find a variety to make it interesting. And again, think activity and exercise. Impacts on things such as your housework and daily activity will also impact on your symptom management. Try and plan ahead and set achievable and realistic goals. These are things we can work through with you as a team. Get advice and try and remain active during a flare. We know that exercise is a really important way to try and help manage these symptoms. Please use the NAS online resources and your local NAS branches for further support and information. Specific to Coventry, we have a local access to exercise. We have a new exclusive exercise referral offer. This is based through the Coventry Lifestyle CV Life Association. This is access to local centres such as the Coventry 87, the XL Leisure Centre, Alan Higgs, Moat House Leisure Centre, Henley Green and the Wave Swimming Pool. Now, there's a QR code on this slide which you can use or you can email lifestyles at cvlife.co.uk they have an exclusive offer where you get your first session for free and then you have 10 sessions at a reduced price of 25 pounds if you want to go on to a further membership there is also a reduced rate for patients that are known to rheumatology at uhcw nuffield health also have a exercise based program this you do not have to be a member of Nuffield to attend these sessions to find out more information please scan the QR code or search nuffieldhealth.com forward slash r hyphen impact their joint pain program is a 12-week program aimed to empower individuals with chronic joint pain to help self-manage their condition and this also includes axbar patients and other patients with musculoskeletal problems so the key messages from today are that some is good, more is better. It's never too late. Make a start today. Small changes in activity and building up of exercise is really important steps in the right direction to help manage your condition. And every minute counts. On this final slide, I've included some links to some other NAS resources for exercises and stretches, um, which you may find very helpful. Or please contact us via the myaxbar at uhcw.nhs.uk email for further information and support. As a team, we'll be more than happy to help. Thank you.